This is Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah, I know. On March 31st, 2022, the resident gave remarks about the high price of gas at the pump. I know how much it hurts. As you've heard me say before, I grew up in a family like many of you, where the price of a gallon of gasoline went up, it was discussion at the kitchen table. Oh, here we go again. I'm, I'm so sure that little Joey Biden felt pain from high gas prices. And many were quick to point out that in the time period during Biden's childhood, oil prices were pretty flat. Which means that his kitchen table story never happened. So yet again, Biden is making up crap about his family so that he can claim that he feels your pain, America. Today, I want to talk about one aspect of Putin's war that affects and has real effects on American people. Putin's price hike. At the start of this year, gas was about $3.30 a gallon. Today, it's about average in 420, 422, it's higher in many states. Nearly a dollar more in less than three months. And the reason for that is because of Putin's war. Except the invasion didn't start until the last days of February. And the United States didn't ban oil imports from Russia until March 8th. And at the time of his speech, gas prices were about 60 cents higher since the invasion but they're also $1.77 higher since Biden took office in January 2021. In other words, gas prices were rising long before Russia even began building up its military along the Ukrainian border. But Biden's going to try and gaslight Americans by saying that it's all Putin's fault. Putin's price hike. And obviously, Americans see through the gaslighting, including, surprisingly, CNN's Abby Phillip and the panel on Inside Politics. This week, the tagline was the Putin price hikes or something to that effect. Look, when I uh, drive past gas stations that say, blame Putin more than they right. say, let's go, Brandon, I'll know the White House fit. Well, I'll know the White House. I'll know the White House has been successful in messaging it. That I mean, th that is fascinating in its own right. But like, take a look at this Quinnipiac poll. Americans just don't buy that this is related to the war to the war in Ukraine. And, and most of it, frankly, is not. Man, when you lose CNN. So yeah, Biden can say Putin's price hike all he wants, but most Americans aren't buying it. Now Putin's price hike, price hike is hitting Americans at the pump. Next, Biden tried to blame the oil companies for the high price of gas, claiming that they don't want to produce oil. Right now, oil and gas industry is sitting on nearly 9,000 unused but approved permits for production on federal lands or more than a million unused acres they have a right to, pr to pump on. Now, of course, that's a lie. Just because a company owns a lease or even has permits to drill in that lease, it doesn't mean that the company could just start drilling. Here's Larry Kudlow and Senator Kevin Kramer on the matter. Senator, what do you think of this bait and switch? I kind of love this. So we gave yeah, you the yeah. leases, but we won't give you the permits or the pipelines to go right. further. Oh, and by the way, we want the SEC and the Federal Reserve won't even give them the financing. What do you think of that bait and switch? Well, this is the gro gross dishonesty of this administration, to your point. I mean, not to mention, he's even fundamentally wrong on the leases. There are right now 2,200 leases that are in litigation. And the oh. only thing a liberal loves more than, than regulation is litigation. So of the 9,000 unused leases, nearly a quarter of them can't be used because of litigation. But what about the remaining 75%? In addition to that, 75% of the leases are being used. And then you have, to your point, this, uh, this, this permitting. Just as one example, the, the, the time frame for per, uh, application to, to, for a permit to drill on federal lands and getting that permit, the timeline has more than doubled since he became president. So instead of Biden admitting that they're slow rolling drilling and pipeline permits, not to mention that he hasn't held a federal lease sale since he took office, He's going to vilify the oil industry. I'm calling for a use it or lose it policy. Congress should make companies pay fees on wells on federal leases they haven't used in years and acres of public land they're hoarding without production. But the Wall Street Journal decimated that narrative, stating that the law already requires companies to produce oil or gas on leases or return their leases to the government. So no, producers aren't hoarding land but they are twiddling their thumbs, waiting for the government to get off their asses and give them the permits they need to get to work. 
And just a quick note, I'm going to be appearing at the Better Discourse Conference number four in Fort Worth, Texas on Saturday, April 23rd. The rest of the lineup features a bunch of really interesting speakers that I'm excited to see in person. And if you're interested in attending the conference and or VIP after party, check out the link in the description. So Biden wants it both ways. He wants to demonize the oil and gas industry, but at the same time, he's demanding that they do his bidding to help pull him out of the crisis that he created. And if they don't, it's because they want to profit from the war. But some companies have been pretty blunt. They don't want to increase supply because Putin's price hike means higher profits. One CEO even acknowledged that they don't care if the price of a, ga a barrel of oil goes to $200 a barrel. They're not going to step up the production. Biden is talking about the CEO of Pioneer Natural Resources, Scott Sheffield, who was asked the following during an interview with Bloomberg News. Should there actually be armed conflict? Should that result in a disruption of energy flows? Would Pioneer in that scenario potentially increase production to help make up any potential shortfall? No, uh, Pioneer will stay with our plan. We announced a CapEx plan, as I said, regardless of whether it's $150 oil, $200 oil, or $100 oil, we're not gonna change our growth plans. So Biden claims that this is driven out of greediness to make money off the war. However, this statement was made before the war and the so-called Putin price hike. We are growing. What's good? We are growing 5% long term. Hopefully it's good enough for the president if he calls me. And as Scott Sheffield pointed out in their last earnings conference call, Pioneer's long term strategy is not the same as the thousands and thousands of other oil and gas companies. Uh, the private independents. Uh, a few of them, as, you, as we all know, are growing. Uh, they've announced growth rates in the 15 to 25 percent per year range. Furthermore, Pioneer produced 375,000 barrels of oil per day last year, which is roughly 3.4 percent of all oil produced in the United States. So as it is, their contribution is already significant. But Biden's implying that they're somehow betraying America. This is a moment of consequence and peril for the world and pain at the pump for American families. It's also a moment of patriotism. Yeah, if I were the CEO of Pioneer and Biden gave me a call, I'd tell him to go to hell. Next, Biden talked about green energy solutions that will save you a lot of money. But most important, the most important thing my plan will do right away is save your family money. Under my plan, which is before the Congress now, we can take advantage of the next generation of electric vehicles that a typical driver will save about $80 a month from not having to pay gas at the pump. Want to save 80 bucks a month? Then take advantage of a brand new $50,000 electric vehicle. And if you need two of them, just take out a loan and buy them. It's just money. If your home is powered by safer, cheaper, cleaner electricity like solar or heat pumps, you can save about $500 a month on average. Except according to the Energy Information Administration, the average residential electricity bill in the United States in 2019 was $115. So I'm not sure how you're gonna save up to $500 a month on a $100 electric bill. But of course, as you've probably figured out, Joe Biden misread the teleprompter and said that you'd save up to $500 a month instead of $500 a year. Because it wouldn't be a Joe Biden speech if Joe Biden didn't fuck it up. Don't take my word for it. Don't worry, Joe. We never do. And of course, not everyone can afford the $20,000 in upfront costs to purchase and install solar panels and heat pumps. And even with tax credits, homeowners wouldn't realize any savings for decades. So there isn't much incentive there. Then Biden talked about how new government regulations on appliances are gonna save you even more money. We're also setting similar standards for appliances, from your air conditioner to your microwave, your refrigerator, washers, dryers. It's just one of 100 actions we're taking to save the average family $100 per year in utility bills. So Joe Biden is bragging that he's gonna save you a whopping $8.33 a month in energy savings. but only if you spend thousands of dollars in brand new appliances. Guess what? It grows the economy. Benefits everybody. 
hurts nobody. So to recap, if you want to save up to $1,500 a year on your energy bills, purchase at least hundred grand worth of solar panels, heat pumps, electric vehicles, and new appliances. Because you gotta spend money to save money or something. Anyway, on that note, that's it for now. Be sure to like and subscribe, and hope to see you next time. If there is next time. <laughs>